Hey everybody, my name is Megalosaurus, and this is Dice Dinosaurs, the show where we do stop here because it's bat country. Bloomboro is here, I'm super excited, there's a bunch of creatures, but there's one that stands above them all! A creature type that has gone on too long to not have love! That's right everybody, I'm talking about... It's freaking bat. We finally got bat stuff! Holy <laughs> shit, I'm so happy it's here! If you'll permit me, everybody's making their top 10 videos, their top 5 videos, their here's some good cards for the 99, here's some good commanders. None of that! <laughs> that! <laughs> All that! Today, we talk about the top 10 best bats in Bloomboro, because why the fuck <laughs> would we need anything else? Now, disclaimer. There are, across the Commander product and the main set of Bloomboro, 13 bats. Obviously, that means we had to cut three, but I love them all so much. It was very hard to narrow it down to 10, but I wanted to make this more concise. Just know, they're not all here, but I love them all. Number 10 is Moonrise Cleric for one and two Orzhov hybrid mana symbols. You get a Bat Cleric. That is a 2-3 with flying, and whenever it attacks, you gain one life. Your general bat strategy, as you'll probably see more later on this list, is going to be gaining or losing life. Uh, I like this bat. It has a wand. It's really pretty. And I love the art. You're, you're gonna hear me say that a lot throughout this list. The art is awesome. They're all just little, little dudes, and they're super cute, and I want to pet all of them. The Sunrisers have entrusted me with their life force. I intend to repay them bountifully. So that's cool. Uh, lore stuff. Sunrisers. Yeah, I didn't... Okay, full disclosure, I didn't read... I don't know much about the lore. I'm not a the super lore person. So I don't, I don't really know what's going on in Bloomberg. But there's that, so... Yeah. Number 9 is Glide Dive Duo for 4 generic and a black mana. You get a 3-3 Lizard Bat that has flying and when it ETBs, which I'm going to keep calling it, I'm not here for this enter shit, it will cause each of your opponents to lose 2 life and you will gain 2 life. Put that f in a flicker deck and watch everyone die slowly. Personally though, my favorite part about the card is its flavor text, which reads, CATCH THE THERMAL! Called the Bat and presumably falling to his death. What's a thermal? cried the lizard. Number eight is Moonstone Harbinger for two generic and a black mana. You get a 1-3 Bat Warrior with flying, and whenever you gain or lose life during your turn, bats you control get plus one plus oh and death touch, and you can only activate this ability once per turn. So it is also an uncommon, which is Poignant because that means that it can be a popper commander. So it's something you might even be able to build around, which is awesome. I, I am glad we are getting these. There are a couple of uncommon bats that we got in this set, which uh, I'm happy about. Uh, it means more decks about bats that I can build. The flavor text on this one reads, Moonstone weapons drink in the last light of dusk to give their wielder an edge in combat. I guess that makes sense, considering its effect is giving everyone, all of it, the other bats, death touch and plus one plus oh. So, presumably this guy is just arming everyone since he's a warrior, just like, here, take this axe! And all the other bats are like, cool! And then they just mow over everything because they have death touch and nobody's gonna want to block that. Next up, number seven is going to be Wax Wayne Witness for three generic and a white mana. You get a 2-4 Bat Cleric with flying and vigilance, and whenever you gain or lose life during your turn, Wax Wayne Witness gains plus one plus oh until end of turn. Uh, I'm gonna be real with you, this thing's gonna get <laughs> huge. Uh, bats like to lose and gain life, and this thing gets stronger every time they do, so whenever it swings in, it's probably gonna be for a lot of damage, which is really cool because uh, most bats are kinda tiny. The flavor text on this one reads, Bat folk clerics consider the cycle of light and darkness as a sacred allegory of life and death. Metal. Number six is gonna be Starlet Soothsayer. For two generic and a black mana, you get a 2-2 bat cleric with flying, and if you gained or lost life this turn, surveil one at the beginning of your end step. 
So that's going to be really useful because of some other bats that do synergies with uh, some grave stuff. A lot of these have really nice artwork. I think Soothsayer is very cute because he has big old floppy ears and he's communing with the stars in a weird kind of way. And I just thought that was really cool. The flavor text on Soothsayer reads, The Lunar Payon, I don't know what that word is, is upon us. Let us turn to our ancestors for guidance and look to our children for hope. Next up is number five, Starscape Cleric. For one generic and a black mana, we're going to get a Bat Cleric 2-1 with Flying and Offspring 2 Generic 1 Black. We haven't talked about Offspring yet in this list, so it's basically the most recent version of Kicker. But when you kick these spells, you're gonna get a, a little baby! A little baby version of the, of the creature that you're casting. They're super cute tokens that I'm sure will definitely be reasonably priced even though they are incredibly specific. So it's basically how Offspring works. You pay the extra, you get a copy of it. It's cool, it's on cast, it's not on ETB, so don't think about flickering it. Although you can bounce it to your hand and then pay the Offspring cost again if you cast it again. It also says this creature cannot block and whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. And again, since bats are going to be getting a lot of life, this thing is going to drain people very quickly, especially with those Offspring token copies. No flavor text on this one, but it is notably uncommon, so hey, another Popper Commander card that can be created, and if you can find a way to bounce it again, more Offspring copies, so that's cool. Number four is going to be Dark Star Augur. For two generic and a black mana, you get a 2-3 Bat Warlock with flying and another Offspring cost. This one is only one black mana, but uh, unlike the last Offspring we saw, this one says at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library, you lose life equal to its mana value, and then you add it to your hand. So if you ha cast this normally, you get an extra card every turn, you lose more life, which is good for bats. If you Offspring it, you get two of these, so you get two extra cards per turn, and then lose more life, which is also going to trigger all of your bat effects. So, this is a really good card! I'm very happy they have this! It may very well be the best bat in the set, I'm not sure, but it's not number one on my list. Number three is going to be Star Seer Mentor. For three generic and Orzhov, you're going to get a 3-5 Bat Warlock with Flying and Vigilance. It also reads the beginning of your end step. If you gained or lost life this turn, target opponent loses three life unless they discard a card or sacrifice a non-land permanent. Notably, this one is also an uncommon, so Popper Commander! Again, we've already got a couple of uh, decks that can be played in the Commander format, which is awesome, I'm always down for that. But more importantly than all of that, this one probably has the best flavor text of any card in the entire set, possibly any card in Magic. I'm not sure, I have to research that. And now, a dramatic reading of the flavor text by Mengi. Each star is given a name befitting its grandeur. This one is called Arax the Night Eater. That one is called Blinky. This has been another dramatic reading of flavor text by Mankey. Number two is going to be Star Charter. For three generic and a white mana, you get a 3-1 Bat Cleric with flying, and at the beginning of your end step, if you gained or lost life this turn, reveal the top four cards of your library, and choose a creature card that has power three or less and add it to your hand. Add the rest of the cards to the bottom of your library in any order. Honestly, out of all the uncommons we've been talking about for these bats, this one's probably most likely going to be made into a Popper Commander deck for me, because I love the effect. It's just value at the end of your turn, and you just get it every turn, as long as you gain your lost life, which is really easy. The main downside, though, is it's a 3-1, so, you know, one toughness is you can breathe on it and it will die, which is not good. So you're going to have to buff its toughness somehow if you want to do that. Otherwise, it's going to quickly gain commander tax and you're just not going to be able to cast it, especially in mono white. So it's cool. And number three.
number one who possibly could have <laughs> seen this coming. It's the one that I can play in the command zone, the legendary, the one and only, the <laughs> card I've been waiting for since I started playing this goddamn game is Zorline Cosmos Color! Listen to you, the <laughs> You're not <laughs> special. Of course, I'm gonna put the <laughs> commander at number one. Of course, you knew that when as soon as the video started. I'm probably put it in the thumbnail! It's not, it's not, it's, it was not. Don't you, he's gonna put the, he's gonna put the legendaries number one. No, I'm gonna put the legendaries number one. It's my list! Mine! I got a back commander and it's Orzov. It's none of that. Aklatots, nobody wants to play with you anymore. Because you're a toxic asshole. I get, I get it. I get, I get my card. It's Orzov. I get both. I get every bat. I have options to every bat spell. And I get to play in the command zone. And I don't even have to play Popper to do it. Do you know what this means to me? For one in Orzov, you get a 3-3 Bat Cleric with Flying and Vigilance. And whenever a bat you control attacks, you gain one life. And whenever Zoraline ETBs or attacks, you may pay Orzov and two life to return target permanent from your graveyard to the battlefield that is mana value three or less with a finality counter on it. Whew. Uh, Zoraline Cosmos Caller is a card I've been waiting for forever, and it's awesome. I'm super glad it's in the game. Unfortunately, it doesn't have flavor text, but that's fine. Uh, it's commander. It can go in the command zone. It's a rare. Uh, not that that matters, because uh, it can't be a proper commander, but it can be a regular commander, so it's fine. Obviously, we've talked about cards throughout this whole list that have, you know, gain life, lose life, synergies. This thing is going to gain life whenever you swing with bats, and you're going to pay life when you want to recur stuff. Uh, the finale encounters are a little annoying, but obviously there's plenty of stuff that can get around that. You can uh, blink it, you can return it to your hand, you can flicker it. Blink and flicker are different technically, I'm pretty sure. I think flicker is immediate back to the battlefield, and blink is, it comes back at the end step. The point is... Uh, you can return to hand, you can blink, you can flicker, you can remove the counter with a card that just says remove counters. There's a bunch of ways to get around that, and even if you don't get around that, it's it's not the end of the world, you know, uh, double value on something is perfectly fine, reasonable, and pretty darn cool to just return something. So, even if you don't include cards in your commander deck that, you know, can get around the finality counters in some way, it's still cool to just be able to do that whenever you attack. Currently in the process of building this commander deck on Moxfield and IRL, I was able to somehow, through the immense generosity of people at my pre-release, collect all 12 of the bat cards just right then and there. So I have all the ones from the Bloomboro base set. I don't have the one that's in the commander pre-con, but uh, I have all of those. I've, you know, I've been collecting bats in Magic through the years, so I've got all those as well. So I'm hoping to come up with something really cool and fun with this. Uh, there's a couple different things I'm trying. If you want to come and see me flail around and try to make this commander deck, I've been streaming it a little bit over on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Dyson Dinosaurs. You can follow me there. I think that's all the bats. I am so happy we got them. It's just been so nice to see a set that has my favorite creature type in it. Granted, dinos are, dinosaurs are a very close second, but uh, bats are just my favorite animal and my favorite creature type. I'm really glad we got them, and they're all just so cute. Like, oh my gosh, the and the alt art for Zorline where she's sleeping upside down is, oh, it's adorable. So, this set is a huge win. I'm not even sure what other cards are in it. <laughs> No, I've been opening packs a bunch, but uh, hopefully there will be uh, another video up sometime, maybe before this one or after this one. I'm not entirely sure when it's going to go, but uh, we'll see maybe some more Bloomboro cards, you know, coming up soon. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for the top 10. I hope you like me going absolutely insane, uh, absolutely batshit insane. Ah! <laughs> 
you like the video, give it a like. If you dislike it, you can dislike it too. That's totally fine. Uh, if you're mad at me because your bats, your favorite bat is not in here, please leave me a reply in the comments. Tell me what bats you like. What bats that are not are in Bloomboro or are in Bloomboro do you like? What cards, uh, separate from bats, do you, are you excited for in Bloomboro? What's your favorite creature type in Bloomboro that's not bats? Or maybe it is bats. Maybe you agree with me and you're based. Uh, but regardless of whether or not you do any of that, I hope you have an amazing day, and I will see everybody in the next video. Like and subscribe, all the YouTube lingo, know when I post, uh, yeah. And I'll see everybody later, bye!